Hey there folks, at long last I am here to bring you my post-mortem analysis of the my participation in the Pokemon Global Link uh, Little Cup Tournament. Um, I, as you might remember, went 11 and 6. Didn't get, actually I got more games than I thought I was going to get. Um, I actually was surprised I got as many as I did, you know. Having a kid kind of sucks up all of your free time, especially on the weekends. Um, but, you know, I got 17 matches in. Um, I would have preferred to have a few more wins in. Um, but, you know, it happens. Uh, so, anyway, over the course of the next few minutes, I'm going to be going over my team, going over what did well, what didn't do well, and presenting what I think is actually kind of a cool analysis, but I hope you will agree. <clears throat> So how did I do? Overall, uh, I came in uh, 1,388th place with 11 wins, 6 losses, no ties. Although I, I got really close with one uh, match. It was almost a tie. Um, but anyway, um, my rating was 1580. Uh, rating is much more important than win-loss ratio. Um, uh, I, basically, their rating system is ELO. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with Pokemon Showdown, it's the same rating system that Pokemon Showdown uses for their ladder. Uh, so I'm very, very well f acquainted with ELO. It's a, it's a simple rating system, uh, but it's also, um, it, it's pretty powerful. You know, uh, I, I'm personally a big fan of another rating system called Glico, uh, and I think but it, it's a lot harder to understand Glico, and especially if you're trying to translate Glico rating into ranking, it gets really difficult. Um, but that is a topic for another day, so I'm just going to focus on the fact, my rating of 1580. So the top person in the competition was a guy named John, um, and uh, I didn't write down his rating here, I'll put it up in the annotations, but what I calculated was that based on his rating and based on my rating, there's a formula that you can punch in that'll give you what the odds are that the better player will beat the weaker player or, you know, vice versa. And so based on our ratings, um, I had a 15% shot of beating John. So if we played um, 20 games, I would have won three, in theory. In theory, all, in all honesty, I would have probably won th uh, zero. But, you know, hacks is a thing. It happens. Um, Versus my good friend, Trainer Zabuza, Zabuza of the Water, Bulky McBulkerson, whatever you want to call him, um, our ratings were much more similar, um, although he still came out much better than I did. Um, so I actually would have had almost a 40% chance of beating him. Um, that 40%, so that, you know, 61 to 39, um, is also happens to be the chance that you flip it, and it's the chance that I would have had of beating um, a 1500 rating trainer. So a trainer who basically um, had as many wins as they had losses, um, and then not just because of matchmaking, but just because they were, you know, uh, the middle of the pack. So um, that basically says that Zabuza is as better... How should I say this? Zabuza is to, to the same degree better than I was than I was to the average trainer. So do with that information what you will. Okay, so uh, just an overview of my team um, to refresh your memory. I had a search kit with Focus Sash. Its primary role was uh, to set up Signal Beam, uh, sorry, to set up Sticky Web, although Signal Beam proved to be a pretty powerful move to take down uh, non-sashed um, Sneasels if they let off, although if it's leading off, that's almost always sashed. But anyway, uh, Inky, I just could not bring Inky. Uh, it is Choice Scarf. I only brought it against, uh, weaker, weaker opponents. Um, it's, uh, you know, sweeping with superpower, it's a thing. Uh, Sneasel was definitely my powerhouse. Um, brought it to almost all of my matches, actually. Uh, it is Life Orb, not Focus Sash, because I'm using the Focus Sash on my Surf Skit, also because I just like that additional power. Uh, Tangela, I did not use Tangela nearly enough. Tangela is a, is a very powerful wall, also has Sleep Powder for assisting, Ancient Power for Scyther, and I guess Yanma, but really wouldn't be staying on a Yanma. Murkrow was kind of one of my more creative sets. Um, it's running Bright Powder, uh, and combined with Prankster Substitute and Thunder Wave, the idea was that, you know, it's not really hacks if you're playing the odds in the long run. Didn't really work out that way, um, unfortunately, but uh, I'll get into that a little later. 
Uh, my final Pokemon was Magnemite, which was basically just there for Swirlix. Although, you know, it's also good against Sneasel and Murkrow mm-hmm. and any other... Like, basically, it's, it's a pretty good Pokemon for the tier. Um, so, yeah, that's the team in detail. If you uh, want to learn a little bit more about the sets, I urge you to check out the video that I uploaded at the start of the, my, the LCPGL competition that goes into these sets in a lot more detail. But now we're going to go ahead and break down how each of these Pokemon did in the tournament. So starting off with uh, Surskit, nicknamed Keats, although you never saw the nickname in the competition, um, I used it in six of the matches. In all six of, them, of those matches, it appeared in the battle because I almost always, I think I always use it as the lead. Um, it was KO'd five out of those six times, as you know, it happens with leads in such a uh, co- in competitions like this. Um, I got my sticky web up five times out of six. That's pretty impressive. I think the sixth time I was just killing a Sneasel. Oh, uh, well, I wasn't killing a Sneasel because it's not under the KO, so I only got three KOs. So Keats was not exactly an offensive powerhouse, but those sticky webs helped me in quite a few matches. So a lot of matches were turned around by the fact that I wasn't having to deal with speed ties. Uh, Aight, my Inky, appeared in only... Th- uh, I used it only three matches, and it only appeared in two matches. So I selected it in three matches, it appeared twice. Um, was never KO'd, that's because it swept both times it appeared in battle. Uh, got five KOs in all. Um, it was fun to use. Uh, really, if I was going to be super competitive in this tournament, I should have probably filled that slot with someone useful. But I, it was just those two matches were totally worth it. Were totally worth taking up the slot. Luray, my uh, my Sneasel. Uh, so used. The, I selected it sixteen times. So that that means I only left it at home once out of seventeen matches. Um, of those battles, it appeared 13 times, it was KO'd 7 times, I was relying on it pretty heavily, but it was KO'd 7 times, it got 14 KOs, including 4 Sneasels. It took out 4 Sneasels in this competition. Um, now, how many Sneasels took it out? I don't think the number was that high. I, I'd have to... Uh, actually, I know it's not that high, and I'll get, to, get into that a little bit later. But yeah, uh, definitely did work, was definitely useful in this ba- uh, in this competition. You know, that's understatement of the century. Uh, and just look at all those Pokemon that it KO'd. Kudzulu, uh, I only brought... It, so I selected it eight times, brought it into battle eight times. Um, it was only KO'd four times, so it... It was pretty, you know, it did its job pretty well. Got five KOs, including that beautiful Scyther KO. I remember that. I was so happy. Also put three Pokemon to sleep. Um, that was also very impressive of Kudzulu. Uh, honestly, I should have used Kudzulu more in this battle, uh, in this competition. Um, I left it at home far too often when it was really a, quite a useful Pokemon. Uh, Devil in the Shortwave, my Murkrow. This Pokemon... Um, Selected it seven times, it appeared six times, uh, it was KO'd five times, only got three KOs, it did paralyze five Pokemon. So that's, a, that is not nothing. Um, but, you know, I was counting on it being a little bit better at doing what it was doing, but that bright powder just did not give me the, the hacks I wanted. Uh, did not you know, shift the odds enough in my favor. So, yeah, oh well, too bad. Heterodyne, um, so, selected it 11 times, it appeared in 10 matches. Didn't get quite the number of... It actually got fewer KOs than a uh, number of times it was KO'd. Um, wasn't as effective as I thought, I guess. But, you know, part of that is I didn't see one Swirlix in the entire competition. I went this entire competition, I was like, Oh, so these, uh, Swirlix is going to wreck me. Swirlix is going to wreck me. And I didn't see one Swirlix. Um, so, you know, that's why... Uh, you know, it was good in theory, but just people decided not to bring Swirlix for whatever reason. Um, so props and slops. So my weaknesses. Um, the, the Pokemon that got the most KOs against me were Sneasel, um, Scyther with, and, um, Remoraid. You know, Sneasel just was KOing everything. Everyone brought Sneasel, and so it was doing a lot of, it was getting KO'd a lot, it was also KOing a lot. Uh, Scyther, Got three KOs against me. I think that was this might have all been in one match I, um, where I completely got decimated by a Scyther. And then that freaking Remoraid. That was just one battle where it completely swept me. Moody, oh my god, so annoying. Okay, so props. Every time I brought in Kazulu, I really felt it did a great job. Uh, you know, putting things to sleep. Um, Giga Drain, great move. 
Uh, ancient power, amazing move against Pokemon that were not expecting it. Uh, slops, again, as I said, Devil in a Shortwave, the hack strategy didn't pay off. I just, I, you know, I should have used that slot with something a little bit more reliable. Um, it just wasn't worth it. Uh, okay, so that's all I've got, folks. I hope you enjoyed this analysis. Um, and yeah, I look forward to the next time um, PGL does a tournament that I am actually interested in. I just don't care about, you know, VGC. If I wanted to do VGC 2015 matches, I would do, you know, rating battles. I know it's not quite the same thing because rating battles allow you to bring previous gen Pokemon, but yeah, I'm just, I'm just not that interested in um, doing more VGC 15 battles than I don't do any right now, but <laughs> so it's still true. I'm not interested in doing any VGC 2015 battles. Ergo, I'm not interested in doing any more VGC 2015 battles than I already do. Uh, so that was rather rambly of me still. Uh, presumably, if you're watching this video, you enjoy hearing my voice. Uh, so you know, stay subscribed to my channel. You should be hearing my voice more uh, soon with some new Wi-Fi battles. I've got a bunch of teams ready. I'm really excited to use them. All right, folks, so long.